good as Scion brand has done the sporty car thing before, now they've done a sports car, the FRS. Let's cut to the chase. It's a blast to drive, and here's the important part. Mere mortals can make the payments. This car's mission, really, from day one, is really a focus that says, let's bring some fun, some sportiness, back to the entire industry, bring passion back to the everyday driver. It has been an awfully long time since your local Toyota dealership offered a performance car that was affordable with rear wheel drive. Last one I can remember is the MR2. Going a little further, what other automaker offers a reasonably priced lightweight sports car? Well, first of all, the car's competition for the FRS is probably the BRZ. That's the Subaru version, which looks nearly identical inside and out. This car is a joint venture. It was really a great collaboration of two, what I, I call two dynamic companies. Um, it, was, it was equally shared, equally exciting. What it really was was taking engineers from both companies and creating one team. FRS draws on Toyota's sports car past. Design-wise, really comes from the, the 2000 GT. And then we had the Sports 800. Then you had your first ever you know, boxer engine in this rear uh, 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 rear wheel drive uh, front engine, uh, boxer engine, that was the Sports 800. And then you have really the true heritage probably comes from the, the Corolla GT or the AE86, uh, but known, in, known by most of its fans by the Hachiroku. As a matter of fact, the team was called Team 86, really kind of through the heritage of that AE86 again. And the Team 86 was brought together by two companies to provide one answer, a very dynamic rear wheel drive sports car. That's it. And it was great to take the three core elements behind them, mix them up together, put it in this car in a 2013 technology and, 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 and manner. It's about the size of a Nissan 370Z, but it seats four, kinda, sorta. Under the aluminum hood, there's a direct injected 200 horsepower, two liter, four cylinder, and a bit of a surprise. The engine is a Subaru Boxer. The advantage, traditional engine pistons move vertically, Boxers pump horizontally, laying flat for a low center of gravity. A design Porsche uses. An optional six-speed automatic gets paddle shifters. The six-speed manual has short, crisp throws. The press event is being held at Spring Mountain Raceway outside of Las Vegas. Zero to 60 happens in an estimated seven seconds. At this point, I should be saying something witty about how good the handling is, and it is very good, but you know what? I'm having too much fun. And that is the point of the FRS. But when you get into it and you start to drive, you find out that center of gravity, your ability to drive and that balance of the car, it is amazing. It truly is. And it has a lower center of gravity than even a Porsche Cayman. It's actually kind of in there closer to, to some uh, uh, Ferrari and LFA type categories of cars. Power delivery is very linear right up to redline. For maximum fun, keep the speed up. FRS is not overly torquey at the low end of the power band. Modern? Yes, it is, but it's the old school attributes that make it appealing. Wow, you can really feel what this car is doing. In addition to the big track, the Scion folks had us competing in a short autocross course. This is to show the agility, and it's got plenty of it. Certainly a lot better than my camera framing. I think the industry has done a great job of advancing itself, adding technology, adding, I don't know, electronics and pieces that some people really want. But there's a lot of people who want just that core driving experience. And I haven't really seen that in the industry for a while. And especially to that person, you know, uh, sub $30,000, that has been missing. And I'm really excited about bringing this car in to answer that, that, that issue. Most FRSs will never hit the track. And in the real world on real roads, it's fairly comfortable and quiet for a sports car. The real world also means you'll be buying gas and the FRS runs on premium. The EPA says it drinks at a rate of 22 miles per gallon city, 30 highway. As expected, the cockpit is straightforward and businesslike with little to distract the driver. Swayed like cloth chairs, hug like a long lost auntie. Big drivers might find them too snug. It's not Spartan, but you won't find dual zone climate or heated seats in here. Bluetooth and a USB port are standard. 
The base audio system sounds good. This optional Pioneer unit adds more power and the new bespoke apps system. Toyota says the door handles are placed so they won't get in the way of a roll cage. There are belts for four. If you can get the front passenger to scoot all the way forward, there's maybe room for three. Only the smallest of kids will want to sit here and you won't want the driver to hit any big bumps. Want a sunroof? Sorry, I'm a bit surprised this driver's car doesn't have tap for three blink signaling. Nitpicking this pre-production car further, the visor is very basic, knobs are a little coarse, and the headliner a bit flimsy. Moving on to the trunk, it's not half bad in size, and all of it can be used because of space-saving hinges. Considering that back seat won't be used much, this is helpful. Toyota claims there's enough room for a full set of racing tires and a helmet. Speaking of tires, there's a real spare, surprising in a car that's all about shedding weight. There's a lot more detail to the FRS design when you get up close. The roof is sculpted, subtle lines are found in changing light, and no, this is not a Scion aftermarket body kit. The badge offers up a nod to the Boxer engine and the AE86 Heritage. If the standard body style is too mild for you, your local Scion dealer would be more than happy to set you up with this optional body kit and loads of other accessories at a nominal cost, of course. At $24,900, including destination, a base car is all you need for a good time. The automatic is $1,100 more. FRS is more than just a shot of adrenaline for conservative Toyota. It sets the bar for the other automakers. Good to see fun is back in style. As always, there are loads of rumors. One is that there will be a convertible. Second is that a four-door sedan is being considered for the platform. Imagine a modern day 2002. That's something I can get behind. At the press launch, we were told that Scion will not have a turbo kit. The aftermarket should take care of that right quick. Finally, the big question, is the FRS an instant classic? Jack Hollis thinks so. I do. I honestly believe that a lot of the people who buy this car in this first year will look at it as a classic. I think they will buy them, they will put them into a museum, they'll put them into their, to their car collection and they will hold on to them because I think they, it is that good of an engineered vehicle. I'm just happy to see a fun, affordable car for enthusiasts. I can't remember this kind of buzz about a car since uh, well, the Miata back in 1989. Well, that's my take on the 2013 Scion FRS. And if you're interested in this car, I have one piece of advice for you. You better get on the list now. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.